I highly recommend anyone that is planning on watching this show not to watch this show without headphones on or at least a locked door or just at least, you know, in a house by yourself because there's a lot of scenes that if someone was to walk in on you watching said show, they would give you raised eyebrows and think, oh my goodness, this man is just down horrendous. That's, that's exactly what people would probably think because Vermile in Gold is definitely the degenerate show of this anime season and if it's not this anime it is a Sekai Harem which also is pretty degenerate as well and I'm caught up with the manga so let's let's just get right into it let's talk about what this is and if it is you know worth your time so Vermile in Gold is so far with two episodes out. The third episode is going to be coming out in a few days from now and I felt like, you know, I just wanted to talk about the series because I've been seeing people mention it and I was like, I'll check it out, let's see how it is and it's actually a pretty enjoyable show. Now, I'm going to be honest here, it is not anime of the season. It is not the best anime of this season, but if you're someone that wants to watch trash, like leg just legitimately trash, fan service trash, etc., then this is going to probably be your show. Because there is a lot of degenerate stuff throughout the episodes. Like, okay, to kind of give a good example here, the one of the main concepts of the show is that our demon main female character, our demon mommy, is pretty much able to suck the mana out of our main male character, which is basically a beta, a beta male. And the point is, is that she sucks mana out of him through obviously kissing, but it's implied throughout the first and second episode that there's obviously other means of her to obtain this magical essence from the main character. And I don't think I need to go into heavy detail on what that basically implies and there's a lot of subtitles and translations that imply like hey you know your magic your mana is very potent and it's like ah yes very potent mana and I'm just like oh my goodness this show like okay legit it is it's very trashy like it is a trashy show it's fun though it is a fun show but if you're before you go any like go into the series and you like it have high expectations like it's going to be like a 10 out of 10 series temper your expectations because it is not one of those shows that is probably going to blow you away in terms of quality writing but obviously you probably know if you're going to start the show you probably know what you're getting into and that's one of the good things about you know Vermile in Gold is that it actually knows what it is it's very aware of what type of show it is and there's so many different segments and scenes throughout the first two episodes episodes to where you see like maybe like certain fan service side boob etc you just see all these little scenes and it's just like ah yes like you can see it fully on display and there is a lot like there is absolutely a lot of that content throughout the first two episodes however there is obviously other stuff going on besides that within the story and I'll talk about that in a second but obviously people are wondering how is it since it is one of those shows that is about fan service, etc. Is it decent? I've seen better, but it's decent. I mean, in terms of art quality and animation, it's decent. Now, let's be honest here. One of the things about this series that really is interesting is that it reminds me a lot of Zero no Tsukaima. And I don't know how many of you guys out there probably remember that show. It's a very, very old show. I think it got four seasons? Yeah, I believe it was four seasons. I know there was three. I don't, I don't remember if there was four seasons, but it's a very old show, an old light novel series, and I, I grew up with that show, and I enjoyed Zero no Tsukaima. It was something I watched alongside of Shakugan no Shana, which is another old, you know, show I watched a long time ago, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that if you know anything about Zero no Tsukaima and its concept of, like, you know, the, this female in a magical academy summoning, you know, a familiar, and this familiar turns out to be a human boy from another world, well, that's basically the concept of Vermile in Gold, but with the gender roles swapped. Basically, the main character is a male that summons a demon mommy from another world that pretty much is now his familiar, and you can obviously see where the story is going with that. So, it's basically the reverse of that, and he's also in a Magic Academy, and, you know, he needed to summon a familiar to even be able to be a part of the Magic Academy and be able to, you know, pass 
passes test exams, etc. Now, in terms of the setting, obviously, as I've already said, it is a magic setting. It's set in a magical academy, and the entire concept of that is definitely something that we have seen so many times, so many, so many times over, and it's definitely nothing new, nothing that is bizazzy or blows you away, because it's a very simple and easy concept to use, just as how being transported or reincarnated in another world is. It's just as much as used as that. Basically, this type of storytelling in a magic academy with a lot of fan service. Now, in terms of the actual presentation of it, the magic academy, the system, the magic, etc., there's nothing necessarily unique with the magic, basically our main male character. He's someone that's very gifted. For instance, he has extremely powerful magic, but obviously people thought that, you know, he might not have had powerful magic because he was not able to summon a familiar, but also because of his relationship with his demon mommy, pretty much, you know, she is able to enhance and, you know, you know, help out his mana supply and make him a lot stronger. So the entire plot is something that you've definitely seen in many different other light novel, manga, anime, etc. But obviously one of the big draws of the series that many people come to is obviously the fan service, the culture content, and, you know, I guess the character design. So I think that is one of the big driving points of this story. Now, in terms of the actual objective, the goal, what the story is about, because obviously, even if you're not necessarily here for the plot and you care too much about where the story is going to go, there does need to be some form of story to at least get things going and moving, because we need at least some form of progression, that something needs to be happening. And so the actual plot of Vermile and Gold is about our main male character wanting to become the best mage. Basically, a respected mage, a mage that is the most powerful, a mage that is looked upon and like, man, this is basically the number one mage in the entire world. That is what our MC wants in the story. And so, it's a very respectable goal, and I'm glad to see a goal like that. I'm glad we're not just having shenanigans of school life and all that, and that's just it. He does have a goal he's going to strive for, and I do appreciate that. It's nothing fancy, but it is still a very nice goal. Now, in terms of the demon side of things, there is a few other plot threads going on. For instance, our main female character, that is the demon mommy, she is uh, someone that is a demon, and obviously summoning a demon isn't necessarily a good thing, because, like, demons, succubuses, whatever, you, when you summon something like that, you know, you're opening the door up to some very dark things, and so because of that, people summoning demons is just not known for in this world. People don't do that. People don't summon demons, etc., but obviously our main character did that, and so he's potentially unleashed like, the demon queen of the entire underworld, for all we know, and we have no idea at this point. So, well, time will only tell to see what she really is, what she's really done, but it's been kind of pointed at that she is a villain. She's probably evil in some way. She's waiting, biding time and all that to probably accomplish what she needs to do. She's probably just accumulating mana, etc. So, I mean, there is that on the side. There is an interesting, you know, plot thread going on with her, which... Once again, has not been fully established, but that's probably going to show its head in the upcoming episodes. Now, besides that, let's talk about the um, the stuff with the actual voice acting and the music, etc. The music's okay, it's forgettable, it's just a typical OST that you would normally get through this type of series. Nothing amazing. The opening ending song is pretty good, by the way. I do like the opening ending. I don't think it's my favorite, but the opening ending is decent. But like I said, the music overall is just like, yeah, it's okay, it's forgettable. Now, in terms of voice acting, I do think that the voice actors are definitely great, especially the main female character, or, you know, Demon Mommy. The way she actually sounds, great voice actor, really good voice actor, fits her role, and I think she comes off very perfectly as someone that is obviously like a succubus, but also someone that is a very mature individual that obviously has an ulterior motive trying to do something behind the scenes. I do think the voice actor definitely betrays the character very, very well. So, that's a good point. A lot of points for that. So, uh, yeah, overall, Vermile and Gold, is it worth your time? It depends. It really depends. It depends on what you're after and what you're actually wanting to watch, because I think that there is a lot of anime from this season that is just straight up amazing. Like, obviously, Overlord, Devil is a Part-Timer, we have Made in Abyss, you know, we have, you know, Asakai Oji-san, we have Lycoris for Cole. You know, there's a lot of stories and a lot of different shows that's come out from this anime season that definitely are stand out to me. Obviously, in terms of everything that I've talked about so far from this season, this is definitely on the trashier side, but I don't think that this series can definitely be counted not saying it's just like should be skit if you're someone that is into these type of shows you're definitely gonna probably enjoy this show that's all i'm gonna say if you if you like this type of content you like that cultured stuff 
then there you go. You're probably going to enjoy it. But I guess I'll leave it at that for now. I uh, just wanted to talk about this show, bring some attention to it, and uh, I might talk about a Sekai Harem in the upcoming days, maybe later today, tomorrow, whatever. But uh, yeah, just wanted to mention Vermile and Gold. But okay, um, anyways, you all be safe, stay healthy. If you enjoyed this video and I brought you any form of entertainment, etc., you know, please do leave me a like. It does help me out a lot, and I would greatly appreciate it. And also leave a comment and tell me how you felt about the first two episodes and are you going to watch episode three? But okay, guys, love you. Chibi out.